Hi, everyone. Um, I, I thought it would be interesting to have a conversation about what is the nature of climate change? Like, what is this phenomenon that we hear about in the news all the time? We, um, we, we think we understand it, but a lot of times when I have in-depth conversations with people, I realize that um, they don't have a full understanding of the nuance of what this problem is and all the ways that you can extrapolate the problems that it'll create for us, our economy, our health, even organized civilization itself. So it is a big deal and we need to take it seriously and I'm thrilled that Takrim is also bringing it to the forefront during our conference. So, uh, first of all, climate change is kind of a catch-all phrase. It's, uh, it's, it's partially global warming, which is mostly what we should talk about. Toxicity, which is a massive problem that we need to address because it's uh, destroying our, uh, our natural world, it's destroying our health, and biospheric collapse, which is the ability for life itself to maintain on the planet. Why is this all happening? Well, industrialization is, is an open loop system as it stands right now, it doesn't mimic nature. Nature in itself, the waste from one system is the food of another. Our human civilization has no such closed loop. This circle of life isn't happening in human civilization. The waste we produce stays in nature and is not recycled into new systems in perpetuity. This whole idea of molecular circularity does not exist in human civilization. It must or else we will literally drown and get intoxicated with our own waste. So that's one thing. The other part which I want to talk about today and help all of us understand in a very simple terms is what is global warming? What is this greenhouse effect? Why does it happen? And for that, we're going to go back hundreds of thousands of years. You know, literally when our species, you know, started to notice that it can do more than just run around, eat berries, harvest, uh, uh, etc. It's true because that's like, this is the beginning of all of that, because before we came onto the scene on planet Earth in this closed sphere in the middle of space, what, we, what happened was um, a spring would happen, all of these leaves and these does and these babies of all these different creatures would suck all this carbon out of the atmosphere to produce matter, because we're all carbon-based beings. So, and then in winter, all the leaves would fall, you know, Obviously, the cycle of life means a lot of creatures also pass away. They would break down into methane and carbon and go up into the atmosphere. So the, the measure of this was a closed loop of uh, something called a gigaton. doesn't matter what it is, but it was 100 up and 100 down. And then we came onto the scene and we were like, whoa, trees, very handy things. We were going to make things. We are going to burn them. We are going to build things from them. So we started to cut down part of the ecosystem that was sucking down carbon. And we created mini civilizations with all these trees and we started uh, to even create industrial farming, not industrial, sorry, like some form of organized farming. Fast forward, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years, we dug a hole in the ground, probably looking for water, ended up with some coal, ended up with some oil. Now, we not only cut down a big part of what was taking down the carbon, now we were finding old, carbon and burning it. So now we have, instead of 100 gigatons up and 100 gigatons down, we have about an 8% discrepancy times, let's say, let's go back to the, just the industrial times and say 250 years. So now we have a problem because the chemical balance on our planet is now out of balance. So what are we going to do about it? And, you know, what we decided to do about it at Full Cycle is, is very simple. What we decided to do is to make it more profitable to clean up the mess than it is to make the mess. Because we believe in uh, aligning incentives. So that's pretty much what it is. So we use the free market system, which is the biggest system we have, to tackle the biggest problem we have. And the, what makes what we do special, and this came out of 20 years of trial and error, is that we first prioritize where money needs to go. Because you can't address warming in a shotgun haphazard approach. Because there's actually certain solutions that are being implemented today that we can implement 75 years from now and it wouldn't matter. Because remember, the warmer it gets, the warmer it keeps getting. So we have to front load the impact of every dollar we spend. So we take it down to the molecule. This is an interesting statistic and I can't believe we're so out of time already, 
is 1% of atmospheric greenhouse gases are responsible for 46% of the warming. So we hear about CO2 emissions all the time, but CO2 is the weakest greenhouse gas, and that 1% of everything else, nitrous oxide, methane, refrigerants, if we can focus on those for the first 25 years of the 21st century or the 50, first 50 years of the 21st century, we can actually buy ourselves so much time that we can start addressing the most lingering, most abundant greenhouse gas, which is CO2. So we maximize where our capital goes in, in the beginning to abate those other greenhouse gases. And we only invest in technologies that are mature because we don't have time to develop early technologies. So this is what we decided to do to take on the problem. And when you're as investors, as entrepreneurs are looking to direct yourself in that domain, think about these small little nuances because again, a shotgun approach is not gonna help us. Thank you for your time.